And I was like, if this is what the anointing feels like. And he says those only few words to me, son, grab onto this board. I need the tube to get home. I am in the middle of the ocean. Nobody's around me. I'd always heard primitive humans lacked intelligence, but I had no idea they were this stupid. One wave comes up and a man is instantly there, ready to save me. This is a very entertaining story, but why am I listening to it? Welcome back, all you unrealized nihilists. I hope everyone is great, and in this video, I'm going to be covering Mario, and he sets off my weird shit a meter. I mean, who goes swimming in the open ocean and doesn't know how to swim? You probably guessed it, Mario. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to let me know what you think about Mario's testimony. I tell you the story how I almost drowned, and God saved me, and, and everything that happened in between. I almost drowned once, and Mario seems to exaggerate his peril, and with the great depth of detail he goes into, he doesn't describe it very well. God, I feel like he finds us in, in different ways, and for some people he's got to be harder than others. Some people never encounter death, some people just like me encounter death you know, multiple times in our lives. Yeah, I'm calling horseshit because Mario just doesn't strike me as the type of person who's been looking death in the eyes. Black Oakley glasses, older gentleman, bald with a huge mustache. Let's just say he made himself very known to me in that moment. No tummy touching. And so I'll never forget this day. It was on a Tuesday. And, uh, you know, while I was there, uh, I had I had some fun. I mean, I had every type of worldly fun you can think of, but that's not what this video is about. I mean, Tuesday was just going to be a continuation of the party we were living. You know, met girls, the whole nine, right? Everything worldly you can think of. I mean, I went through it. Right? He gave it the whole nine yards when he went to the beach with his buddy and his parents. Fun fact. The whole nine yards is attributed to World War I fighter pilots who were engaged in dogfights and they'd use up all their ammo, a nine yard ammo belt. And they would say, I gave it my, they gave it the whole nine yards. I was not about to let my inability as a swimmer to know, make the day boring. I was like, all right, let's go. And we're going at it and then Chase is making great progress. And, you know, me not being a really great swimmer, I was wanting to, like, keep my feet on the sand the whole time. I was wanting to know if I could really tiptoe my way all the way to the sandbar. I feel 10 feet tall right now. I wasn't too far into this 20, 30-yard voyage until I have to start swimming myself. And the waves are, like I said, they're really pumping today. <laughs> so when I'm taking, like, two strokes forward, the waves pulling me one stroke back. Making it hard for me. So it wasn't about 10, 15 minutes later. I'm swimming. I'm swimming. I am trying. My, I'm giving everything I've got to battle these waves. So I've only been to a couple different beaches, and they usually put up signs warning people not to go in over their heads. And oftentimes they have these things called lifeguards that stand up there with binoculars and shit. It's going to be the best wave of my life, and I hope the camera's rolling because you're going to want to watch it. I feel like that I don't have the energy to make it to the other side of the sandbar. So with my hands. But I feel like I may have enough energy to kick back and just make it to shore. I yelled to Chase, Chase, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go hang out here. I don't think I can make it. So he's over there, he's already talking to some other people. Um, and I start, I start backstroking. So your best friend abandoned you to go walk on water at a very shallow sandbar. And you was like, hey man, I can't make it. I'm gonna go back to shore. And he was like, yeah, fuck you. That's the only way I could figure out how to float. Now we can do everything but float. <sighs> I was the guy caught in the middle of that who got pulled under. And not only did I get pulled under, I happen to be breathing in at the same moment. Uh -oh. Just lungs filled with salt water. Lungs filled with salt water. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys have ever been in a situation where you're about to drown, but the one thing they tell you not to do is to not panic. And I started panicking. It has the words, don't panic, printed in large, friendly letters on its cover. Mind you, I'm already exhausted. 
Now I'm oxygen deprived. I've got lungs full of salt water. I've got lungs full of salt water and I'm barely kicking and scrappling to get to the surface. Scruple. <laughs> to hesitate or be reluctant to do something you think is wrong. Thank you. And so at this point, I get up for my first breath and I just blow out salt water. So yeah, that's just not how it works. Water's a hell of a lot more dense than air. Therefore, it takes more energy to expel it once your lungs are full. It's a fool who looks for logic in the chambers of the human heart. And then I just want oxygen desperately. <laughs> I didn't inhale. And my head's under the water and I'm really starting to question this entire trip. I'm starting to question everything in my life. And I remember in that moment, the one thing that I thought of more than anything was the church. I remember that time I almost drowned. I had all these deep and meaningful thoughts and a heightened sense of situational awareness. And I didn't scream like a frightened little girl for help. I mean, I didn't take church seriously. I really didn't even know if God or Jesus existed. But in that moment, that was actually the first thing that I thought of. And if I was going to find out who God was, who Jesus was, it was going to be that moment. And it's been the only time in my life that I can remember where I have literally said these words out loud. I've fallen and I can't get up. God, please save me. So I edited this out, but I'm not going back to look for it. Earlier, he was like, I didn't call for help because I didn't want to look like a pussy. He probably worded it a little differently. And all of a sudden, third wave comes up, and I just kind of ride with it, float with it. That's weird, considering that the last two waves sucked you under and you actually drowned. Come back down, not knowing what's going to happen this third time. So I'm not a body language expert, but I play one on YouTube and it just shocks the hell out of me when someone's telling a story and they're just constantly shaking their head no. But a man literally comes out of nowhere. And when I tell you that nobody was around me at that moment, nobody was around me. But nonetheless, this man comes out of nowhere and the only thing that I remember about him is he had Black Oakley glasses, older gentleman, bald, with a huge mustache. And all of a sudden he said, son, grab onto this. Because lying is a skill like any other, and if you want to maintain a level of excellence, you have to practice constantly. And so me, without any question, I grab onto that thing and I'm holding on for dear life. And he's, he's rocking me in to shore and I'm just catching my energy and I'm just trying to kick the water behind me to just help him all that I can. And so he's got one hand over here pulling and his other hand is just pulling me. Nothing is impossible. Not if you can imagine it. And finally we get to shore. I mean, I didn't even wait till I could touch the, touch the, the sand underneath the water. I just wanted to touch the sand. I don't like sand. That's everywhere. And so as soon as we get there, I literally collapse. Out of, out of exhaustion. I mean, I had nothing inside of me. Inside of you, inside of you, I long to be, is it wrong to be? And all of a sudden, I don't have, I, I, I just, I can't even think in that moment. You're dead, yeah. you're gonna hurt yourself. And then he gets up, leaves the board, and walks. It's literally like a movie. I remember just laying my head. See if I can dramatize this for you. But I remember laying my head on the sand and just looking out that way. And he just walks. And he's not looking back at that cool explosion. Doesn't say a word to me. Doesn't allow me to give time to give him thanks for literally saving my life. And then he, uh, he went up to this old shack, you know, and I realized that was an angel sent from God. <sighs> Ooh, I get goosebumps thinking about this. But to this day, I truly believe that was not a man.
I'm hypnotized, but I cannot find the signs. That was an angel sent from God to respond to my plea for help. Because how else do you explain the events that happened? Look, Mario, I'm not going to sit here and deny that you weren't in a stressful situation, but I just think you've replayed this in your mind so many times that it's probably not originally what had actually happened. I am in the middle of the ocean. Dude, by your own testimony, you weren't in the middle of the ocean. You were 30 yards from the sandbar and you didn't make it that far before you failed. Nobody's around me. One wave comes up and a man is instantly there. You said it yourself that your asshole friend that abandoned you was within talking distance. Ready to save me. Swims me to shore, walks off, says not a single word to me. You nuts, it's not a conspiracy, it's no big deal. What else could it be? What else could it be? It's huge, man, it, it changes everything, it's like it, you know, the... I'm just thinking, wow, God is real. It was an angel. I'm telling you all, it was an angel. Have you ever, ever heard of an angel that was interested in sex? Of course not. Angels do not have sex. I still didn't live the most holy life as soon as I got saved that week. I didn't get baptized in Jesus' name till I was 21. So you were saved when you were 15, but you didn't get baptized till you were 21 years old. That don't make no sense. But at 15, yeah, I knew God existed. Yeah, when I was 15, I thought stupid shit too, guy. Like that time I almost drowned when I actually got water in my lungs. And I wouldn't describe it as tasting salty. I would say it felt like fucking fire. I had no question at that point. I still didn't live the most holy life as soon as I got saved that week. Because the moment that I yelled out, I'm having chest pain. But I was not about to let my inability as a swimmer to know. Me not being a really great swimmer, I was wanting to like keep my feet on the sand the whole time. I was wanting to know if I could really tiptoe my way all the way to the sandbar. Underwater physics, I happen to be breathing in at the same moment. I've told this story to people and I get the same exact response. Bro, I just got chills. I just got chills. Wow, bro, because earlier you said that when you think about this, you get cold chills and now I've got cold chills. And uh, yeah, yeah, that really happens. Something crazy happened today, and I think this is the first time that it's happened. I literally felt God take over my hands. So here it is. This is not me playing. Like my hands were going crazy. They were doing all this stuff, stuff that I kind of practiced, but, and I was like, if this is what the anointing feels like. I do find people like Mario interesting. In his comments section, people were like, hey man, I love Jesus too, but I'm wondering if it's not a good thing to entertain his type of fantasy. Anyway, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments.